Even as vaccination drives pick up across the world and coronavirus cases come down, there are reports of new variants which could spark a fresh wave of infections. Malaysia too has been trying to clamp down on a new surge in cases which has put pressure on the healthcare system. To discuss the steps taken by the Malaysian government, joining us now is Anwar Ibrahim, the leader of the opposition in Malaysia. Thanks for joining us. Now, the pandemic began almost 18 months ago, but we still don't have any respite from it. India, of course, has experienced a deadly second wave. New infections are surging across Asia as well, including in Malaysia. Do you believe that the pandemic is worsening in its second year? Well, um, globally, it has not. Um, uh, United States, uh, UK, going back to normal, although new variant is also a new challenge. Uh, presenting new challenges as time goes on. But uh, for us, the poorer and the marginalized uh, must often realize that somehow or other there is um, an apparent neglect or abdication of responsibility on the part of the rich countries for not disbursing enough vaccines. And I think uh, notwithstanding the problem that we will encounter, the availability of vaccines is to me pivotal. Let's discuss the situation in Malaysia now. A hard lockdown was imposed after daily infections touched the 9,000 mark by the end of May. Now, this has put considerable strain on Malaysia's healthcare system. Recently, Malaysia's daily cases exceeded India on a per capita basis. So, what is fueling this surge in new cases? Well, even the old cases or the new cases, regardless, shows uh, the government's incompetence in dealing with this issue. I mean, this issue, new variants is an excuse. Look at the testing. We started with 126,000 tests per day. We have gone down to 50,000 tests per day. This is an attempt to mislead the public. You must be transparent. You must work based on data and science and not try to um, whitewash the problem. So um, that's one. Number two, we are very slow compared to the ASEAN and South Asian countries. We are the slowest in terms of uh, procuring uh, uh, adequate vaccines. And I think despite all the lockdowns and other measures, including social distancing, awareness with the general public to take that responsibility on their own, the pr problem remains the vaccines must be made available. A state of emergency has been imposed in Malaysia until the end of August. Do you think that this emergency will be extended if Malaysia fails to control the surge? Well, I consider the regime um, corrupt, illegitimate, because uh, it, has, it, it knows clearly, the public is aware, that they have lost uh, legitimacy because they have lost uh, majority in parliament. So they had to resort to a uh, state of emergency. Now, this is the only country in the world that has to use the emergency powers to deal with the issue of the uh, pandemic. Now, uh, all the measures that be taken is adequate without emergency being introduced. What's the impact of emergency? Number one, in terms of COVID, dealing with the COVID situation, it has no, no bearing whatsoever. But the general uh, 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 view, uh, perception of the international community of investors, of course, is adverse to the interests of Malaysia. People will not come in. You don't come into a country where an emergency is being declared. So I think it is um, uh, accumulative, cumulatively, and also uh, because of these uh, failures, it has somewhat uh, worsened the situation. And this is, uh, to my mind, a reason why emergency should not be, have been de uh, uh, declared in the first place. And now, knowing that the government is keen to prolong the emergency, the king and the rulers' conference have advised strongly against that. So it's interesting. It's unprecedented. This is a constitutional monarchy that uh, the rulers are somewhat compelled after listening to the uh, uh, complaints and exasperations by the common men and women have to then advise strongly the government in public that emergency cannot continue or should not continue. 
Right, my next question. Now, the pandemic came at a time when Malaysia was witnessing a political turmoil after the abrupt resignation of Mahathir Mohamad. Mohideen Yasin took over as Prime Minister without a parliamentary vote. But Prime Minister Yasin has also faced growing dissent. So do you think that the political impasse contributed to the worsening of the pandemic in Malaysia? Well, um, it was certainly exacerbated the crisis. When the government is deemed to be Ill illegitimate, not having the courage even to convene parliament, and, um, and no clear directions, uh, haphazard policies, uh, general incompetence, and even suspect uh, of being, uh, having corrupt deals uh, continuing as uh, more systemic these days, so uh, naturally, uh, you can deal with not only with the pandemic, but also the economic or social problems faced by the people. You have met the King of Malaysia several times to discuss the prevailing crisis. What is his view on the state of affairs in the country? Well, um, I, I'm not <laughs> in the capacity to express uh, the entire deliberations with the King, but what is important, which I have also uh, said publicly, the king seems to be very aware. He has uh, advised initially against uh, the emergency being declared, but as a constitutional monarch, finally he did concede. He has publicly advised the government to convene parliament, uh, which the government has not uh, responded. So I think some of these issues, like the death, the number of uh, positive cases registered, the uh, proper poor procurement of uh, vaccines and poor rollout all these sort of things of course he's concerned and i think um, this sort of exchanges has helped him to uh, probably understand and appreciate some of the concerns of the other side and and the general people so i think um, he is aware but as you know ours is a democratic uh, system parliamentary democracy and constitutional monarchy so uh, I don't think we need to therefore portion the blame or in terms of poor governance to the institution of uh, royalty, but generally it is the power of the ruling uh, government or establishment. Right, let's move on. Your political rivals have criticized you for making a bid for power at a time when unity is needed to control the virus. So how do you respond to the charge? My first statement as opposition leader after the pandemic is to declare that we are willing to sit down with the government in a bipartisan uh, manner to discuss all issues. There was no response. The problem is not Anwar as opposition leader. The problem is a government that has lost its uh, majority and no legitimacy. And how do you expect that government to conduct policies, to give instructions and directions when the situation is rather fluid. So it is not, uh, therefore, proper to apportion a blame to one person or one party. Go through the process. The process can take just a matter of days, if not maximum weeks. But, but I think a matter of days can be resolved if you respect the democratic process. And I think that's all that we're asking for. Respect the democratic process, a sitting prime minister must resign when he has lost the majority and let the process continue. Now, both ruling and opposition parties are splintering considering the wide-ranging differences over a potential replacement. Do you believe that a change of guard at this time will do more harm than good? Well, it depends if the, the, the new coalition can be clear in policies. Now, if I'm entrusted uh, to lead, I'm my... my Policies uh, are made quite clear. It must be predicated upon the issue of good governance uh, and deal with the pandemic in a transparent manner. Don't be so condescending and insult the intelligence of the common people. You must allow them to get the facts right. Do we have this problem? What are the facts uh, nationally? and at the granular level so that we are able to deal with it with the situation and i think the resolve must be there to deal with the covid and to then regain the confidence of the uh, investors both domestic and foreign direct investments into the country you know M malaysia used to be 
you know, the leading uh, country in the region, in the South Asia at least, in terms of uh, growth and in investments uh, and, and uh, economic policies. But we have faltered because of poor governance, corrupt and incompetent. Now, global ratings agency Fitch Solutions has assessed that there is widespread and growing dissatisfaction over the government's handling of the pandemic. The report goes on to say that Malaysians may take to the streets if elections are not held in the coming months, should Malaysia go for fresh elections this year. We are of the view, as we have advised the king, and I think generally accepted, that by this is, of course, consensus, that we should not uh, clamour for immediate elections until we are able to resolve the COVID issue. Let's now discuss the global situation. The developed world, of course, is reopening again after aggressive vaccination drives, but the developing countries are imposing new lockdowns yet again. Do you think countries like Malaysia and India are stuck in a pandemic spiral as of now? Do you believe that Asian countries need a united regional response to end this pandemic? Yes, I think our voice should be more uh, profound, strong, in demanding what is generally just. It is not a new issue. I remember uh, economists like Amartya Sen have been talking about the issue of health, vaccines, should be global, should be, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a policy that is uh, transparent and fair. Now, um, we have the capacity, as I've read, to produce 11, 12 billion doses per year. Now, we have to have clear undertaking for the richer countries to know that um, whilst they have been rather successful in um, the vaccinations uh, program in their countries, it's time that they should not just give, uh, you know, simple aid, hand out of, uh, you know, a few hundred thousand doses, but to deal with this as a basically humanitarian problem and a just resolution to the problem. Right, my final question for you. Last month, Prime Minister Yasin told the developed world not to hoard vaccines and their patents. India and South Africa are leading an effort to seek a waiver on vaccine patents and other supplies. What is your view on a waiver and what can Asian countries do to break the monopoly of the developed world when it comes to vaccines? Well, to me, it is rather indigenous, uh, disindigenous for the Prime Minister of Malaysia, known for systemic corruption and incompetence to attribute the blame and deflect from your incompetence in the country. But the fact remains that the procurement has been really sluggish here and the rollout has been completely inefficient. Now, having said that, and if you are able to do that, then naturally we, should, we can be deemed to be more credible in terms of demanding a more um, responsible uh, policy by the industrialized West uh, to then disperse uh, more effectively to uh, other countries. Right, Mr. Ibrahim, thank you so much for speaking to us on We On World is One. is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.